about sticking together and holding up and compelling stories of survival and second chances. All next on Larry King Weekend. Thanks for joining us. I have spent close to 44 years talking to people for a living. So I got to figure I got a knack for expressing myself. But when it comes to describing what I saw earlier this week at Ground Zero, I really cannot find the right words. Where are we? Well, we're pretty much dead center on, you know, the, the tragedy. This was the North Tower. That was the South Tower, as you know. South Tower was hit first, or hit second, but came down first. The North Tower is where, where we were in the early stages in the lobby. And when they realized that they had so much fire, they were pushing more and more people upstairs into it to try to get the fire out. And people just kept coming in and in and in. And then when the second tower got hit, everybody knew that it was uh, terrorism. The first, the first point, nobody Could have been sure. You know, we thought maybe it was a heart attack, somebody flying a plane or something. Nobody knew it was a commercial airline with so much fuel on it. So that, that began it. Uh, that's just been an unbelievable three weeks. You can see that where we've moved into an awful lot of heavy construction. They've taken out, I think, 167,000 tons already. It's just, we think we'll be here another nine months to a year, really, at this point. And the firemen go in every day yeah. looking. It's not a rescue operation anymore. No, I mean, we're... We, we haven't called it a pure recovery because every day we hope that, you know, we're, if we're not going to rescue a live firefighter or a live police source or a live civilian, we're going to get their remains. So it's important to everybody that's here. I think it's important to the civilians that were caught here, and it's, it's very important to the firefighters and police officers. So we're constantly trying at least to, to give them that dignity. How long will there be? Smoke will be a long time, huh? Yeah, we, you know, it, it'll die down, and then we'll pull some steel off it, and get some oxygen, and it starts up again. Yesterday, we had a good fire going in there. It's, you got to remember that it's six or seven stories below this, of malls and subways and everything else. There's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done when this gets to ground level. We'll have to uh, attack it then, besides pulling out all the debris, they've got to bring in all the engineers. There's 100 engineers working every day on this project planning for when we get to that point where all of those different levels have to be reinforced. It's the tragic of the humanity gone in here. Yeah, I mean, it's now, it looks like a construction site. No big deal. You know, uh, they're, they're pulling equipment. But there's 6,000 people. That's what it's, that's the horror of it. The buildings will be replaced. But 6,000 people, it's... Uh, and how, how do your okay. men and women handle finding body parts and all that? I mean, how do they... Believe it or not, they're very happy to find them. You know, they everybody's resolved to the fact that we're not going to rescue any of our guys. There's, there's always that that dream that there's some something that's going to happen. But I think they're resolved to that. But they're happy now. We've gotten to the point, and we can't believe it, that we feel good if we tell a wife that we found remains of her husband. I mean, that's, that's the saddest situation that we've ever been in, that that has turned into a good thing, you know? So the guys are glad when they find remains. They, they're glad that they can take it out with some dignity and, and give the remains to the wife or the mother, and then uh, people oh. begin to get in that process. You know? it's it's incredible. incredible. Isn't it? It's, uh, you know? Television doesn't show No, this. no, it doesn't. It, it's really hard. The Verizon building is there, really, you know, knocked out communications down here. They've been working on that feverishly. Verizon's done an unbelievable job. The Merrill Lynch building behind this one, around that side, will be the first one to get back in operation. American Express is going to be a while. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'll bet you two or three months. How long have you been with the party? 31 years. I came out in 1970, you know, I figured only three months to go. I never dreamed. It. It's funny, when I first came on, a, an old timer said to me, Kid, the worst thing you'll ever have is a plane crash. <laughs> I didn't know the last three months I'd have a plane crash with a World Trade Center. If these buildings didn't implode, 
they'd fall it. Yeah. Like if they toppled. Yeah. Well, I don't know it if it could have been, been much worse. I don't know if it could have been much worse, you know. I guess, it, you know, depending if they had gone one way, maybe it wouldn't have been uh, as bad for the other direction. How do you know that there isn't some materials in there that might explode? Well, I think it would have by now. You know, it's been so hot. That's a really hot fire. The steel has been hot for three weeks now. Tremendous heat below. You know, it's, uh, the fire is not out down here. Subway wasn't damaged or what? No, we got the word that, oh, it's definitely damaged, but they got word to empty the trains. Somebody made a good call on the other side on Path in Jersey, and they sent no more trains. So I think they lost the train that was damaged, but everybody got out. How do they coordinate all of this? It's broken. How does one know what the other two are? It's broken into four sections. There's a chief in charge of each sector. Like I said, there's 100 engineers working on the project. FEMA has brought in all kinds of ability for us to plan and uh, you know, do things we've never done before on such a large scale. And they keep building mounds so they can get the heavier equipment in. At this rate, we'll be here a year. That's what the experts predict today, anyway. I guess a lot of that depends on the winter and where the that's the building they were worried about collapsing. That one? Yeah, that scared everybody. It's got a little bit of a bowl on the top. So people thought it was going to collapse. And see, the first day or two, there was a lot of panic going on here because we didn't know. You know, now we have a handle on it. But the first day or two, they didn't know if there were secondary devices in other buildings. People were running, you know, very afraid. Get out of there. concerned about trying to find their guys. People just saw a firefighter they were working with, and he disappeared. They all, they wanted to go back and try to find him, you know? Did you hear that? Yeah. Is that a piece of steel? Is that a piece Talk of steel drop? That's one piece of steel that's picked up. You need one truck, carry it out. The weight of it is phenomenal. It took probably took somebody an hour or two hours to cut. Hi guys. Hi. How you doing? How you doing, fellas? How you doing? Good seeing you. What's our role here? Uh, well, I'm not an engineer, but we're trying to fill this hole. And uh, something about the retaining wall that's holding the water back. We're trying to brace it. We're just pouring the water in here to help the uh, dirt flow in there. As far as why, you probably have to go to an engineer. This is hot, huh? Huh? This is really hot in there. Uh, you sure. get a shot. This is what gave us so much hope in the beginning. We thought maybe. See? See? Well, I get hope. Maybe in those kind of spots, we find somebody, you know? But as time goes by, the guys have been, the guys go down, they crawl around into all these things. They're looking, they're trying to find, doing the best they can, but it's just, you know, you see the weight of the steel and the debris and the amount of heat that was down there. We, we, we don't believe we're going to find anybody anymore. But they were going crazy the first week, you know, 10 days, two weeks, just hoping that they'd have a miracle and, and in, in a void like that, they'd How find How many somebody. days after was a live person found? No, no, nobody. Was anyone yeah, ever found? We didn't find anybody after. It was right that day, there was some people pulled out. But not like after in the that, afternoon. Yeah, right. after that, there was nobody. And we, and usually you don't have that. When you have a collapse... You find someone. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, thing is cantilevered, there's somebody's dripping water, there's air, there's oxygen, you know, people can survive a long time. But with this, the, the, the compression, the, the, the weight and everything was just... But that was the, that's what drove everybody in the beginning. Now it's, now just trying to find somebody's remains is what's driving the guys to. Uh, and you could find it see. anywhere, right? Yeah, look at it. Oh, man, you get a kid like this, is in your second year? 
Yeah. The second year on the job, you know. So. Why are there? Uh... Took me 31 years to see something like this. Do you He's think? He's seen it his second year, you know. Do you think uh, a lot of the bodies just? Yeah. Well, I think that a lot dust. of them, the, the heat, the uh, just so evaporated. So, yeah. And the compression, the weight of 110 stories turned it 80 feet. You know, all 110 stories, we had 80 feet of rubble when we started. So, you know, what can you, you know? I'm allowed to 172. They put us together here. So we, uh, when they find the bodies, we have to put them in a bag and bring them out. Are you are you finding something every day? Uh, or there are days you find nothing. Some days we don't find anything, and other days uh, we find groups of guys, and uh, you know, it depends. It varies from day to day. There's so much trouble. Well, how do you how do you ever get used to that? Uh, we, well, we've been doing it every other day. I've been here every other day since the attack. And the destruction here is beyond incredible. There's still like six, over 5,000 bodies still there, and we haven't found them. That's how much destruction there is. And you can smell. You can smell it, yes. That's why they give us this. They give us the uh, the bits. Put it under the nose, so we can, uh, it'll take away from the stench. Yeah, that's And then they give us this one here to put it. Uh, they give us all the material that we need. This thing here is for the um, asbestos and dust. So we're pretty well. There's yeah, yeah. no way you could have trained for this. Oh, man. This, this is beyond all training. I, yeah. I mean, it, it, the job is just devastating here, and uh, there's no way you could prepare for something like this. This is really an act of war. So. How many hours a day you work? Uh, we're working 13 <laughs> hours, 13 hour shifts around the clock. The schedule that we have is uh, overwhelming because on Sunday we went to two funerals, Dave Weiss, who used to work with us from Ladder 172. And we had a guy, Chief Barber, that was on Sunday. So we went to those two funerals. And then Monday had to work. Tuesday had to work. Wednesday we're here. Tomorrow we have another funeral to go upstate to. And then tomorrow night I have to go back to work. And Friday night I have to go back to work. And that's when what we say do. night, you work what hour? All night? Yes, from 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. So it seems to be that all we do is work and go to funerals. And then back to work, back to funerals. You guys work hard. Yeah, we yeah. work hard. Great, great men. Great, great men. I don't know where we get them, but we get them someplace. Thank you. Thank you. You're not surprised at how good they are. Not surprised a bit. Not surprised a bit. They gave 110 to 10, 150, whatever he asked, we get it from, and it's great. Oh, so everybody must have lost somebody you know, right? Well, some more. Yeah. I have 34 years, so I knew almost everybody. I knew 200 guys. It's like using 200 friends in one day. So, so first thing for that. You guys are doing a great job, man. The whole world appreciates you. Thank you very much. We're doing our best.